Alright, welcome back to the operator overloading tutorial. This is part four and in this video we are going to overload the equality operators for our vector2 class. Now the operators we're going to overload include the is equal to operator which is represented by two equal signs and then the not equals operator which is represented by an exclamation point followed by an equal sign. If we overload these operators for our vector2, we can check if two vector2 instances are the same or different, and we can use them in simple checks and conditions. So let's firstly go ahead and open up our vector2 header file. And within the public class declaration, I'm going to type out the prototypes of these overloaded functions. For the equality operator, let's type ball as its return type is going to be true or false depending on whether the vectors are equal or not and the function is called operator equals equals which is the is equal to operator this function will have one parameter which is a constant vector to reference called v and at the end of the method I'm also going to type const to make it a constant method all right, just going through this signature, we are passing in a constant vector2 reference such that we cannot modify the state of the vector itself. And the function is a constant method as we do not want to mutate any data members of this class. Now let's do the same for the not equals operator. Again, the return type is ball. The function is called operator not equals. The only parameter is again a constant vector2 reference called v. You can call the parameter whatever name you like. And let's make it a constant method as well as we don't want to mutate any data. We're just checking if these vector2s are either equal or not equal. All right, with these uh, prototypes declared, let's go within the vector2 CPP file and implement them. I'm going to implement them below the set y method. So beginning with the is equal to operator, let's go ahead and type out the function signature. Ball vector2 scope resolution operator is equal. The parameter is a constant vector2 reference v. Constant method and within here we need to return true or false depending on whether this instance of the vector2 and the one we are comparing are equal or not. So I'm going to type return and in parentheses say x underscore the private x data member of this vector2 instance is equal to v dot get x. All right, after this condition, I am going to append by typing two ampersand signs a second condition as we need to compare the y data members in our vector twos as well. So let's type y underscore the private y data member of this instance of the vector two class is equal to v dot get y. All right, so in this condition, we are checking firstly if the x data members of the vector twos are equal. If they are, this condition will return true. We're then comparing if the y data members are the same, and if they are again, it will return true. If not, it will return false. Pretty self-explanatory. We are inputting two ampersand symbols to concatenate an additional condition to this expression. Therefore, they both need to evaluate to true for this function to return true. If one of them or both of them return false, this function will return false. And that is the complete function for the is equal to operator overloaded function for the vector2 class. Now let's do exactly the same for the not equals to operator. I'm going to type ball vector2 scope resolution operator not equals. The parameter again is a constant vector2 reference v constant method at the end 
and within here I'm going to type return and this time in parentheses we're going to check if this is not equal to the vector 2 we pass in so I'm going to type two open parentheses an asterisk followed by the this keyword to dereference the pointer of this vector2 instance. Now after the closing parentheses I'm going to call upon the is equal to operator overloaded function we have implemented above and pass in v as the parameter we're going to compare. Let's end off this expression with an end parentheses and save our file. Now what we're doing here is that we are utilizing the is equal to function we have declared above and returning the opposite value of our boolean from the not equals operator function. We are returning the opposite as we've specified an exclamation point before calling the is equal to function. So we are utilizing our operator overloaded function to define another related operator overloaded function in the class. This is good practice and I recommend utilizing your previously defined functions if you can. Now one confusing aspect of these implementations is that we have a lot of opening and closing parentheses. So if you're copying this code or following along make sure you input every single one of these parentheses and uh, just double check that you don't have any errors. Now those are the functions implemented, very simple so far, let's go back to the main function and see if everything is working. Alright, I'm going to remove all the code we have done for our Vector2 instances. Let's create a new example. I'm going to create two instances of the Vector2 class, one called Vec1 and the other called Vec2. Alright, let's use the extractor function to input values inside our vec1 and vec2. From here I'm going to check if these um excuse me, I'm going to check if these two vector twos are equal to each other. And if they are, we can output a message into the console window and print out the vectors. So let's type if vec1 is equal to vec2. If they are, we're going to print out a message saying vec1 is equal to vec2. Let's uh, put a colon, leave a new line, and end off the C out. I'm also going to call C out again, use the inserter function for the vector2 class, and print out vec1 and chain on vec2 as well. Now after that we need to check if the not equals operator overloaded function works. So let's input new values inside our vector2 instances. So let's type c in extraction vec1 extraction vec2. And above here we can print out a message saying enter new values for vec1 and vec2. Okay, we can now check if our vectors are not equal, and if they are not equal, we can print a message to the console and again print out our values. So let's type if vec1 is not equal to vec2, C out, we can say vec1 is not equal to vec2. Let's leave a colon, end off our expression, and again print out our vector2s using our inserter function. Let's uh, print out vec1, chain on vec2, and that will conclude our simple application. Now let's uh, run the application and see what we've got. Alright, and the first thing we need to do is input values for our vector2s, and they need to be the same. So let's go for 20 and 25, 20, 25, and now we're going to check if the two vector 2s are the same. So I'm going to press enter. They are indeed the same, and we get the message to confirm that. In addition, the two vector 2s are printed out. 
All right, after that, we need to input different values for our vector twos to then compare if they are not equal. So for the first one, let's go for 13 and 32. The second one, 98 and 87. So you can see they are totally different values. All right, when I press enter, we go into our second condition. We print out that the vectors are not the same and we print them out just for confirmation. To make this application look a bit nicer, we can print out a new line at the end of our uh, messages to the console. All right, and that will conclude this tutorial. We have successfully implemented operator overloaded functions for the Vector2 class that corresponds to the equality operators in C++. In the next video, we will overload the assignment operator. So I'll see you there. Thank you very much for watching.